So can you explain kind of what happened that day? Deshaun wasn't your husband, was he? Or he was? Okay. So your plan was to go hang out with friends? No, he wanted to go and see his mom. Oh, his mom. Okay. But his mom wasn't home, so in the process of him leaving, he seen one of his friends. And yeah. his friend was like, You want to smoke? So he ended up getting in the car and he said he needed to go to the smoke shop. Okay. Okay. At what point did you know, the Virginia Beach police officer pull you guys over. As soon as we parked in a parking spot, they instantly came over there. Yeah. They claimed that the car you guys were in was stolen? Yes, ma'am. That's true? Yes, ma'am. Do you have any explanation for that, or? Mm -hmm. A girl that I've known since I was like a kid, she was with us, and she told us the car was hers. She kept saying, my car so it, for like a good week we was all going around she was taking us places she was letting him drive sometimes she told us it was her car but after like two days before this incident happened that's when we found out the car wasn't her car basically yeah and was there a course of action you were thinking or you're just thinking it's not really our car we're just using it my action was I told my husband we should get rid of the car. Yes. And at one point he didn't. My husband, he, I admit, he's never really struggled. Me, I grew up in foster care. I grew up not having nothing. I know how it feels to grow up without lights and having to take showers with buckets. I know how it feels. Mm -hmm. My husband, he has, he's grown up to where he has had cars, he's had jobs, money had his own, so he, I guess typical boy, wasn't gonna get rid of the car because it was a way to get around. Mm -hmm. Me, I'm the type, I don't care to walk and take a bus. That ain't nothing. I did it plenty of times. And I just had that bad feeling me should get rid of the car. Yeah. And he just didn't listen. It took for the point where I told him, well, I'm just gonna leave. And he said that as soon as I see my mom, we'll get rid of the car. So what happened when the police pulled you over? They are saying, you know, there was some resistance. I was in my phone when the officer pulled up behind us, but I didn't really pay attention at that point. Only the next thing I seen was my husband jumping out the car and kind of scuffling with the officer to get away. Mm -hmm. He started running. When I realized what was going on, I got out of the car and tried to run his way. But the officer didn't even chase my husband, so I couldn't get away. He came around and he tackled me. And, and at that point, is it true that you did reach for a weapon? No. The officer put a gun to the back of my head, and a civilian pulled over and was telling the officer, you don't have to do that, she's not resisting. So my husband decided to come back. I'm telling him no. I told him run. Because we always we always made this pact. If we ever got in trouble for anything, one would lead the other one. Mm -hmm. Just so, just in case a situation like this, one of us could still talk to each other. Even if one of us would be warned. Yeah. So he came back, and the officer is telling me if I move, he gonna shoot me. And I wasn't moving as much. Then that's when, when he pushed me a different way, one of my hands was caught under my stomach, the other one the officer had. So it was like, and he was pressing into my back. My shirt ended up lifting up and my gun had revealed. I was telling the officer I am armed, but I'm not going to do nothing. The officer kept pressing on me and like, reach for it and I'm going to shoot you. I was telling him I'm not going to reach for it. When my husband came back, my husband reached into his bag and not a second later, the officer got off. I hate
He ended up shooting my husband, and I took the gun from my side and I threw it because I didn't want to get shot next. Mm. Yeah. Then, let's say I know um, another female was coming up, and she tackled me as well because I was trying to get up to get to my husband, and I had lost lost grip from the officer a little bit, and I was trying to run to my husband. And a female paramedic tackled me. And she told me, so you want to pull out guns? You're a stupid bitch. Wow. That's why I feel like this. I feel like at the end of the situation, it could have went a whole different way. <laughs> that officer, he could have shot my husband in the leg, shoulder, anywhere else to get him to stop rather than shoot him in the head. I feel like he really abused having that badge all because my husband was trying to protect me. <laughs> Even people around told the officer he didn't have to do that. Mm. I, at first, the officer didn't know I had a gun on me. I wasn't resisting at first. I was letting him know I was armed. <laughs> but for him to have that gun to the back of my head, my husband felt like my life was in danger. <laughs> and anybody... Like me, knows that all of a sudden I'm gonna be scared to shoot. How many, how many people? Oh, um, not trying to be racist, but black males just like my husband been shot at, even for no reason. I was scared. My husband was scared. Yeah. Nowadays, all the shootings going on and everything. So many people are scared to walk around without a gun. Mm -hmm. I've almost lost my life a couple of times. I've had a gun put in my face not too long ago by, by somebody that was, was supposed to be my closest friend. If it weren't for my husband there, I could have been shot then. Mm -hmm. So you're saying your husband reached for a gun in order to protect you because the officer was pointing a gun at your head? He the last thing I heard my husband say before he got shot was get off my wife. What were those moments like for you when all of this was going on? I was stuck. I felt shocked. I couldn't believe it just happened like that. Yeah. Do you have any questions you'd like yeah. to add on? Yeah. I have a few more, but if you, any more. If you want, go ahead. Okay. I'll, I'll ask again. How long were you with Deshaun? What was he like as a person? Um, we've been together for almost three years now. So we've been married a year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My baby, he was he a kind person. Right? He don't really like arguing. He was 28. He don't like arguing. He was more mature. He was a family person. All he wanted was me, him, and his family to get him off because his family don't really like me. For one, my age, and then a lot of stuff me and my husband been through. Me and my husband has been through a lot. We've been through having an apartment together. We've been through being homeless together, staying in a shelter. He's been there every step of the way. My grandma passed away in April. He was there. My husband was locked up here because he had caught a um. Indecent exposure. He was locked up here mm -hmm. and still called me every day while my grandma was in the hospital. Mm -hmm. Even when I got out, he still came and seen me just to make sure I was okay. Mm -hmm. It was like our bond was different. It was unexplained. When we that's exactly how we, we felt was that we felt like if we were apart from each other, then it's like we weren't ourselves. Mm -hmm. And my husband always said it too. He made, he definitely made a comment to me like Sunday. He made a comment to me. It was like, babe, let's take over the world. He always jokes. Let's take over the world. And then he said, let's go out with a bank. They call Mark. When I say how close we were, me and him were like Marnie and Clyde. If it came down to somebody arguing with him, I would step right behind him. 
they came down to someone arguing with me. He would be ten toes behind me. <laughs> Bro. All it is is we were two people that's been through so much that was just trying to get ourselves together. <laughs> trying to put ourselves in a better predicament. <laughs> yeah. But my baby, people might say stuff about him. Like an officer came to me and said, oh, so was your husband suicidal? My husband's not suicidal. He never was. But he always said if it came down to it, he'd rather die than live on earth. Because how things are nowadays. And most, I'm not saying y'all might not understand it, but people my age or around my husband's age understands it. Everyone losing their lives left and right. Some people get hit in the crossfires or something that doesn't even have anything to do with them. And it's hard because you don't know what's going to happen. Bullets don't have no names on it. Yeah. All, all anybody trying to do is survive. And nowadays, it's, the world ain't what it is. I grew up having to survive on my own. I know how it feels. I, I physically seen people get killed in front of me over stupid stuff. So it's like, I understood why my husband did what he did, but if I could go back, I would have made sure he kept running and didn't come back. At this moment, if I had to, I wish I was the one that got shot and not him. Cause me, I know I messed my life up. I was already fighting charges before this. My husband, you know, I had no record. My husband went to college. He graduated. He got a son. My main thing is his son lived enough. His son, oh, every time his mom would take his son from my husband, his son would cry and say he want to go to his daddy. I know just as much as this hit in me is going to his son because he loved his daddy. I know this is hard to talk about. We've seen police state that you had a prior domestic violence conviction. Can you explain what that stemmed from? Me and my mama got in a little scuffle and my mama pressed charges on me. She was mainly doing it because when I was 17, I caught some charges. I was in the wrong place, wrong time when I was 17. So my mom pressed similar charges to get me locked up. But when my mama realized what she did, of, of how they basically tried to catch me with double jeopardy. Mm -hmm. She felt bad. She started talking to me more. She tried to come up with a plea deal with a lawyer and some more stuff. Yeah. It's like she tried to fix what she made a mistake of. So they still did charge me with assault on a family member, but they dropped it to a misdemeanor. Okay. Is there anything that you wish you could change about Thursday? And all of that happened. I just wish, even if he wanted to see his mom, I wish that we would have took a lift or yeah. took the bus or walked, honestly. Because I don't think that officer would have bothered us if it wasn't for the cop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. My name's Eugene Daniel. I'm also a reporter, same station, 13 News Now in the area. So we appreciate you taking the time to talk to us because I can see how tough it is for you. And I think no one really wants the circumstances that have come to this. I've got a few questions just based off of some of the things that you said. Can, so you said you had been dating Deshaun. You had been with Deshaun for three years, married a year ago. Did y'all get married in, yeah, in Norfolk? In Norfolk? Um, how'd y'all meet? Um, I had just got out. It was like, um, I was locked up at TDH and I had just got out of TDH and I ended up meeting Deshaun. I got out of TDH when I was 18. They gave me like an ankle monitor. 
he ended up texting me on Facebook and he said that I was pretty. Did I want to be friends? And I was like, well, sure. Because at that point, when I made that mistake I did when I was 17, my mindset while I was locked up was I wanted to reevaluate myself. I wanted to make a whole new circle and leave the old people alone so I wouldn't get in trouble again. Well, it was around Christmas time coming up and I didn't really have family. Like, no one really talked to me. Even though I had family around, nobody invited me to like family events or anything. I grew up in foster care, so I was always distanced from them. So, Deshaun had told me that he was with his family, but he had his son, and he would put his son on the phone with me all the time. And his son would show me his toys, and we started having a bond. Me and his son off rip. Mm -hmm. So they came to spend Christmas with me and my aunt that I stayed with. And my little cousins, they got along with his son. My aunt, she bought stuff for his son. And me and Deshaun just started getting closer. And the best moment I won't forget is when he stayed that Christmas. We played spades, and we made a bet. If I won, he would have to move in. And if he won, he said, well, you got to, we're going to go on a date, and you got to pick what date, and you got to pay for it. So it was cute. And of course, I ended up winning spades. I just got out of TDH, so I know I played spades. So I ended up winning, and I told him he didn't have to move in if he didn't want to. But he did. He said, well, he said, a bet's a bet. I want to move in. So him and his son came to stay. And I felt like everything I went through as a kid, I felt like all of that didn't matter at the moment. I felt like he was really my inner peace. So let's go back to the day that all of this happened. You told Brenna that when you were on your phone in the car. Next thing you know, Deshaun is getting out of the car and running. Why, why did he run? Because we knew the car was stolen. And so that takes me back to the next question. When you all found out, you say that you found out two days prior that the car was stolen, did you think to report it? Did you think to tell anyone that, hey, this car is not the friend who you haven't, you haven't named, so, mm -hmm. um, that this wasn't hers? No, we were just gonna leave the car somewhere and just leave it be. Because how, honestly, how it's going right now, they charging me with the car. I didn't even drive the car. I would, all actually, I feel like if you're going to charge me with something, at least charge me with joyriding, because I never touched that wheel. But it's nothing I can do, because yeah. I was connected to him, so I guess they feel like I stole it too. But he didn't even steal the car. But you guys knew that it was stolen About prior to that incident. Mm -hmm. And were you the only two that were driving or riding in that car during that time span? or No. So other people were driving the, the girl, car as well. The girl that took the car, she had told me she had the car for like two weeks. She told me it was hers. Then every time I would like call her, she'd be in the car full of people or somebody driving it for her. Mm -hmm. One day I needed her to take my nephew home. So she, when she came to me, some dude was driving the car, and I kind of, I kind of tweaked on her a little bit because I'm like, I don't know who he is, and you bringing him around my nephew. I don't like that. And it was just like she had a bunch of people driving for her or she was always out driving. So I thought it was really her car. I didn't think nothing of it. When did that change? When did you realize the car was stolen? I realized the car was stolen when my husband was driving because how she drives, I was scared she would crash or something. Because it seemed like she don't know how to drive for real. So my husband drove the car for the first time and she had gotten an argument with my husband because she was like, me, my, me and my husband, 
we had a girlfriend as well. That's because I ain't, I'm not gonna lie. I know my case that I was fighting in Norfolk, I could be looking at 20 years. So the girl that we evolved in our relationship, I knew her since high school. She always called me babe. We always was friends. We always chilled together. We just never made it official. She was always my dog. She was there for me since day one. When I got in trouble, she would always be there to help. When she needed me, I was always there. So we, I used to mess around with her when we were younger, but my husband never really did anything with her because she was my age at the time. And that's the person who said it was her car? No. No, someone else? No. How does she, how does she fit into all of this? Because um, that's how we found out the car was stolen. So when I was talking to, the main reason I brought her into our relationship was because I felt like I would get locked back up. And like I had told my girlfriend, promise me that if something happens to me where I get locked back up, you'll always be there for me. Because I am not gonna lie, I was basically mending her to be the next me. Cause I didn't want to see my husband alone if something happened to me. Cause I know how I feel to be alone and have nobody. And I know if something happened to me, it would hit him harder, just like it hit me years ago. So basically, she promised that she would be there for him and everything. And the main reason I did that is because I love both of them. I love my husband to death, and I will, I will always have love for her. So me and her were talking one day, and the girl had let us all use the car one day. She let us with the car. She ended up taking my girlfriend posted a video on uh, her Instagram. And it was like just a little meme thing with her face in it. So the girl that took the car took her off her she screen recorded my, what my girlfriend posted on her story and put it on her story. And I told the, I texted the girl and said, my girlfriend said, take her off your page, you ain't got no right to put her on your page. And she was like, make me. And I was like, I'm not even about to argue with you. All she said was take her off your page. She was like, well, don't even worry about it because the car y'all riding in right now, y'all just gonna get caught up anyway. And I put two and two together. I'm not dumb, I'm smart. I grew up literally in the streets. I know what it'd be like. So when I put two and two together, it made me know that car was stolen. And my girlfriend and me kept telling my husband, get rid of the car. When we found out that day, we told him get rid of the car. You mentioned that there was a possibility that you could, you were facing 20 years. You said that? What was, is that a current case right now? And um, what's that about? It's a case I've been fighting for about three years, since I was 17 years old. Okay. That's in Norfolk or Virginia, in, in Norfolk. Um, do you mind sharing about what that case is about? Um, um, I really don't have no comment because my name was never released. Because okay. I was a juvenile. Okay. But all I can say is, when I say I understand how it feels right now, I've seen it myself. I've seen a girl get killed in front of me. So seeing my husband get killed in front of me is just another trauma. And my brother, he just died in 2019, shot in front of me. And his killers never got found. So does that, um, and that kind of leads me to my I guess one of my last questions, um, and again, thanks for being so uh, willing to share. You had a gun. You you admit that you had a gun. Uh, obviously, Deshaun also had a gun. Um, you knew that you weren't supposed to have legally a gun, but if I'm hearing you correctly, uh, you felt that you couldn't feel safe without having one, but you knew that you couldn't have it legally on you, not only because of the record, but just because it wasn't legal possession. Right? Yeah. yeah. I'll admit that, I can admit what I do wrong, but all actuality, like my husband said, he didn't even feel safe walking around without a gun. And nowadays, if y'all watch the news and stuff, there's so many teenagers and adults dying. Is there, any, is there anything else that you you want to share um, 
your story, the Sean story, what you hope people, what you hope people, when they hear your side of things, that that they will walk away from in all of this. All I can say is, yes, I had to say me and my husband did take some legal steps at that moment, but if it's anybody else that ever came in my position, all I can say is. Nowadays, we all know how officers get when it comes to a scene and if they even feel like you're rich or poor enough. All I can say is, like somebody else in here, just don't be, just put your hands up. Don't even react. Because if I didn't react or my husband didn't react, my baby still wouldn't be here right now. <laughs> all I can say is, if, if it is a chance, I'll get out. I don't never want to touch a gun again. I don't ever want to be around another gun. I don't even want to leave the house if I get out. <laughs> if it ain't going to work, I don't even want to be bothered. Ms. Ortiz, thank you.